All right, Shalom. All praises, honor, and glory be to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh, Bahashim Rakakwadash. All praises be to the Most High God, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. And honors be to the elect elders of the nation of Israel, Barak Yamla, Habayath, Madabada. Blessing to the house of David, your brothers laboring day in and day out, giving all diligence, making your calling and election sure. Once again, and to you, Akim and Akwath, who listen and believe. On the glorious gospel being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. Unto you I say shalom. Peace unto the body of believers, the elect. Right? This is Brother Sakalai once again. Coming back with a lesson all through the spirit. And I pray that this edifying, exhorting, and comforting. Which is Philippians 4 and 7. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Which is this truth. So I'm going to jump right into it with this article from NewYorkPost.com. And I've had this article for a few weeks. And it's dated November the 8th. So this was on the heels of Trump winning, you know, his re-election to be uh, selected as a new president of, ba of Babylon, which is America, right? Babylon the Great in the Holy Scriptures. Now, the title here says liberal women withhold sex, shave heads to protest Trump when my bodily autonomy matters. Now, it goes on to say liberal women are withholding sex from men and shaving their heads to protest President-elect Donald Trump's landslide victory over Kamala Harris. So this goes into women being liberal. Now, let's continue to read because this is speaking in general. The freedom that women have within the society, which the scriptures cover all that, and we'll get some precepts to support this. But let's see what the second... Um, beginning of this paragraph says it says the demonstration was inspired by South Korea's 4B movement against gender-based violence where some women in that country have vowed to follow the four no's no sex no dating or marriage and no having children with men the trend took off in the U.S. on TikTok after Trump's win Tuesday with many women posting about their refusal to engage with men romantically or sexually over the next four years. Citing dwindling abortion access across the nation and an increase in young male Republican voters. Continuing on, and you see this whole thing of body autonomies at the heart of it is women having the freedom to kill children legally and having the freedom to live how they want to, to be whores, to be sluts to uh, actually um, uphold wickedness, to have the liberty to, to, to do whatever they want to do, not, not to be uh, in order as the Most High requires the women to be. Continuing on, as you see, this is going on. Now, we know in the spirit of things that a lot of these Edomite women, let me show this picture here, are the ones that, are behind a lot of this but a lot of our women fall in line with liberal things because our women be become liberal too and why because they take on the ways of the society that's what it means to be liberal basically to be for the ways of the society in which you live right once again that goes into the heart of liberty freedom the freedom of choice pro-choice you know um and the scriptures speak totally against that so this is going on in korea and now you have women that are here in Babylon in America saying, hey, we should do the same thing. Now, a lot of these women, you know, can't hold water more than five seconds. So we know that, you know, although this sounds kind of, you know, foolish. The idea is that this is what's in the minds of people here because they don't want to um, they don't want to live or do things. Right. According to righteousness, they want to live wickedly, as it says in John, the third chapter, I'll quote a few precepts. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. So that's the spirit that's on the earth today. It says, as a woman, my bodily autonomy matters. And this is my way to exercise sovereignty over that. Who encourage other women to delete their dating apps in solidarity? If you need someone to cuddle or give you a kiss. I bet you one of your girlfriends would do it and you don't even need to be gay. It's okay to have a lot of platonic love for the next four years, she said. 
Other users have taken to the platform to encourage women to take it a step further and collectively get hysterectomies, while some said they are breaking up with their Republican boyfriends in the wake of the election. Do you have, on the other hand, with with our people, with Israelites, a lot of our women start with the so-called black women who are mad that a lot of men, you know, you had a portion of men who I don't know what the numbers were, but men that um, sided with Trump and then those that are called chauvinists in the society. Right. And men that are, um, you know, sexist, as they like to say, these are the terms they use, which some men wanting a man to run the country as opposed to a woman. Now, all of it is wickedness. All of it, according to the Bible, you know, you know, whoever the president in, in, in Babylon, well, the most high, you know, don't it doesn't matter. Right. Because ultimately, there's only going to be one fate that Babylon is going to actually um, suffer, which is total destruction, total annihilation. Now, it goes on to say F being skinny, F being hot, F being all the things that the patriarchy wants us to be, because clearly they don't give a you know what about us, said one user who began hap haphazardly shaving her head, um, her full head of hair on camera. Stop dating men. Stop having sex with men. Stop talking to men. Divorce your husbands. Leave your effing boyfriends. Leave them, she said. So we see that this mindset really is something bigger because, yeah, this probably doesn't apply to the, you know, the majority of women, but the ideal of it, right, is what the issue is. And it speaks to the heart of um, women in the society, right, wanting Kamala Harris to win so that they can be assured if the Democrats are in office that there won't be any opposition in any way to the freedom of choice that they have to live and do what they want to do. Now, at the core of all this also is the fact that Trump being the president don't change women being liberal. And let's show that. So Trump being the president, the president is just a figurehead. It doesn't change the fact that women are going to be liberal in the society. That doesn't change anything because it's all prophecy, right? So prophetically, everything is lining up because this is nothing's going to change what the Most High said is and would be and what would happen. That's, as a matter of fact, at the core, the essence of what prophecy is. First Timothy 5 and 6, which are the words of the Most High coming true. First Timothy 5 and 6 but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. So those that live in pleasure, it says, are dead while they live. Giving us a, a great example, illustration today, how we would see that women and our women would be living in pleasure, doing what they want to do. And that's clear within a society. Women can wear whatever they want to wear. They can go and do whatever they want to do at any time. Anything that's wicked, they can do. Now, if you break any of Esau's laws, right, which he's held up or deemed to be righteous in a society, his law and order and his ordinances, well, he'll put you in jail, he'll prosecute you. But ultimately, if you want to live and do things that's contrary to what's found in the scriptures, you Israelite women, you so-called blacks, Hispanic and Native American and indigenous women that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, right? Who comprise and make up 12 tribes of Israel. Esau is, is, cool, is firmly cool with you living wickedly. You breaking God's laws, you're not knowing who you are. But, if you wish to do anything, you know, that's righteous, he's going to actually persecute you for that. But if you want to live wickedly, he's going to give you all the freedom in the world to live wickedly. Right. So those that live in pleasure is dead while they live. Why is that important? Because liberal women, you know, are about to meet their fate as well, which is Jacob's trouble. The remedy, you know, for the freedom and liberty that women have and how this has been set up. Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. The remedy for that, let's go back to Jerry, uh, let's go to Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. The remedy for that is Jacob's trouble. Isaiah 4 1. That's the remedy for women having the freedom to live wild and free, to live in pleasure, which we just read that <clears throat> these liberal women around the world are dead while they live. How much more you Israelite women? Because the Most High is going to start with his people. Jacob's trouble, a big portion of it is about the Most High reordering and you know, putting everything back in its proper place. And that starts with chaos, right? That starts with a true revolution. This is Jeremiah 31 and 22. How long 
will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord Yahweh have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. That's right. So a woman now is held in high regard within the society. That's why they have the freedom to live and pretty much do as thou wilt. That's the spirit that's on the earth today. Let's get a few of these that come to mind. This is um, Ecclesiastes 26, right? <clears throat> so a woman has compassed a man. So that makes everything very clear. When we go into the scriptures, we can see and understand what's going on. Everything else is confusion. This is um, Ecclesiastes 26 and 10. If thou daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. And that's really the issue here. Is not bodily autonomy, right? It's not having enough freedom, right? Freedom of choice and religion and, you know, uh, freedom to do whatever you want to do. The, the real issue is over much liberty, having too much liberty. That's really the problem. But that shows you the mindset of the average person today because you have a lot of men that are feminists, right? And a lot of men that push that spirit as well that are even Israelite men, that the Most High is about to kill a lot of these people. He's about to delete them because there's no need for a sinful man, the, most, the scriptures say. There's no need for them. Speaking of man or woman, the Most High don't have no need for you if you are not actually serving him to you Israelites. Let's read that again. Ecclesiastes 26 and 10. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly. And a lot of women today in society, especially in the Western culture, are shameless. Meaning they'll say or do or look or promote anything on social media in actuality you go out into you go into stores you go into anywhere you're going about in the cities or wherever you may be you'll see women doing saying and promoting and living however they want to so that shows that a lot of women are shameless it says keep her in straightly lest she abuse herself through over much liberty so over much liberty is really the, the key issue here but once again, the remedy for it, the Most High has given us the understanding that the remedy for it all is Isaiah 4 and 1. And we'll get there. This is Isaiah 32. And I don't want to get all this because it's just speaking about the elect. Let's go to the point. Isaiah 32, when you read this from the top, right, it gives us clarity about what's going to be going on here in the last days. But let's just go to the point. Isaiah 32 and 8. But the liberal deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. So this chapter, right, is speaking about how the Israelite woman would be in liberty here in Babylon and throughout the earth. But to return from that, if they have hopes of receiving salvation, not only the elect women, which is a very small portion of people, are going to actually return. Just as, you know, the men, the 144,000, which are standing up doing his work in truth and sincerity, well, it's consequently the same way. But on another note, it's letting us know because women, the scriptures say, are the weaker vessel. And that doesn't get talked about enough. Matter of fact, let me get that. Why would the scriptures be now all throughout the Bible letting women know, and this is pretty much a whole chapter dedicated to women, letting them know that, hey, you got to return from the ways that you're living, which is contrary to the laws and commandments, Right. Or the most high is not going to have no exemption for you just because you're a woman. Right. In fact, he's going to execute that because he's given the warning through the men of the Lord. First Peter three and seven. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. When a man lays down with a woman, that woman becomes his wife and he becomes her husband. They become one. Right. According to the Bible, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Now, women in a society, right, are honored as in being lifted up, being the leaders um, having liberty, freedom. You, you see women, right, uh, worldwide now twerking because they see Western women doing that. Women going out to the clubs, half naked, walking around, just doing whatever they want to do, right? The, in the music, uh, you got like uh, this woman, uh, Glorilla, you know, at the red light, twerking on the headlights. You, you see that kind of, you know, imagery pushed out into, into the society. The Megan Thee Stallions, the, all, all these women, the, um, What's a little Down syndrome girl name? She actually got Down syndrome. Um, uh, what is her name? It'll, it'll come back to me. Ice Spice. You see these type of women out there, where this is this is the image this is the image and and the and the spirit of our women, 
all down. You just keep going. These housewives shows, all these shows on TV, these love and hip hop, all of that promotes nothing but wickedness. Right. And that's the spirit a lot of Israelites are in. Continuing on, likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So those who are not going to comply, well, the Most High, once again, has an answer for that. And that's what we're reading here. Isaiah 32 and 8, but the liberal devises liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. But most people are just going to go with, with having the freedom to live how they want to live, not actually considering the words of the Most High. And for that is when great judgment is going to come. And that's why total slaughter, which is Jacob's trouble, is, is soon to come because you have disregarded the words of the Most High, right? They have no effect to you. They have no relevance, no purpose. Isaiah 32 and 9, rise up, you women that are at ease. He is making it clear, speaking to directly to the women, starting with the Israelite women. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters, because our women are careless here in Babylon because they're liberal. Give ear unto my speech. You're supposed to be actually, you know, uh, hearkening to the words of the men of the Lord. You know, considering the words of truth. Many days and years shall you be troubled. You've already been, you know, in the process of being troubled. Ever since this whole COVID, you know, Crown 99 thing kicked off. If you really are you know, uh, watching and seeing things in the spirit, you can tell that at that time, more and more things change and they get they, things became more drastic within a society. A lot of changes happen, right? Many days and years shall you be troubled, ye careless women, for the vengeance shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble ye women that are at ease. See, it keeps making, you know, this, um, uh, putting emphasis on the fact that you would know this because in these last days, as we read Jeremiah 31 and 22, the woman has compassed the man. We see that that has come to pass, right? In the greatest extent that it's ever been on the earth. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones. And what? Why would they need to tremble? And why are they called careless ones, right? Or before, yep, you careless women. It keeps saying careless ones, careless women. Why? Why would they be called careless because they live in a liberal a, a society where you can live and do as thou wilt. That's why it's saying that strip you and make you bare gird sackcloth upon your loins. Verse 12. Let me highlight this verse 12, Isaiah 32 and 12. They shall lament for the teats for the, it says for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. That's the, the construct of the society today. Right before this happens, Isaiah 32, and I could go to or Isaiah 3, but you know, I'm gonna go right to four because from three from about 16 on down, it tells you the judgment is coming to the wicked Israelite women that refuse to prepare. Right now, Isaiah 4, it says a remnant prepared. Now, I'll start at one, Isaiah 4 1, it says, and in that day, seven women, which just means a complete number, right? Seven is, is used, you know, to, to, um, to denote completion throughout the scriptures. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, now this hasn't happened. So we know that this is to come. This hasn't happened before. So this is a uh, prophecy, right? Of things that will happen in time events. So in the midst of Jacob's trouble, one of the events that's going to make up Jacob's trouble. One of the things is going to happen, how we're going to know the times we're in is that women are now going to come back to being women again, right? They're going to come back to being meek, humble, to being, um, you know, fragile, not being careless, reckless, um, putting or having a spirit of a man on them, things of that nature. W women are going to be, are, are going to want to turn, return to being softer. Even a lot of these women that are dykes out here, right? A lot of these women that are dykes out here are going to want to change too, because what's going to change is, is the fate of how the world is being run is going to change. And that's going to happen overnight. When Jacob's trouble is here and in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread. This, this is showing that humility, the most high is bringing humility back, starting with the women. We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Now, today, you got women that, that are saying, well, you know, if you want to you know, get with me, you're going to have to take me out, you know, court me for, for months, you know, 
um, buy me things, pay pay some of my bills. This is the really the spirit that's there now, right? It says, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. And they're going to realize then, right, when everything falls apart, that they truly are the weaker vessel. When we read, going back into um, First Peter, the third chapter, that's when they're going to know that, right? So that's what's coming. That's what's coming. So in the time when these things are coming, now we're going to see that the, the, the liberty and the freedom to live and do what you want to do and all, all that's going to be gone. <clears throat> and when things run their course and they no longer become effective, you know, or needed, right? When the Most High has allowed certain things to happen, but he goes on to the next phase. So so this, the, 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 the actual um, society that we live in today under Esau's rule is almost out of here, right? Esau is the end of the world. So this has become no longer effective to the Most High, which is why the prophecies and the, and the hell upon the earth is ratcheting up, right? And there's always a reset. And Isaiah 4 and 1, in the time of Jacob's trouble, is that reset, right? That's coming. So to take away our reproach. Now, right now, a lot of women still live in freedom, so they don't really see this as anything that's viable, that's realistic, right? They don't see it as that. So when you go to scriptures like this, this comes to mind in Micah. When you go to certain scriptures, you know, most women don't really think that, well, okay, we'll, we'll see if this happens. I've actually told women this over the years of being in their faith. And a lot of them have scoffed at the idea that Isaiah 4 and 1, you know, can and will actually happen. They're like, I don't, I don't see that happening because they're looking at it, you know, from a, a carnal lens. They're not spiritual, right? They, they don't have the knowledge of, of, of this, this truth. So, yeah, if you are in this world, you're drunk, you're asleep. So, of course, you're not going to anything that you hear out of the scriptures, you know, you're dead. You're dead to it. Right. You're living in pleasure. You're dead while you live. We read in First Timothy five or six, Micah seven and ten. Then she that is my enemy, which is speaking of the Israelite woman. Right. Shall see it and shame shall cover her, which saith unto me, where is the Lord? Yahweh thy power. Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the street. So that's what's coming. And in, to women in general. But this is speaking first and foremost to, to the Israelite woman. This is why, and this is more of the warnings, the Most High has set up the men of the Lord to give you the warnings. Right? And, and then, let me touch on this. To you um, to you men out here that are actually uh, feminists as well. For you men that are for women living and doing whatever they want to do, so on and so forth with so you got men out here, well, I got a daughter and I want her to, you know, you know, be able to have freedom and do what that that's all wicked. And I'm going to show that because the scriptures cut all that. Let me, um, let me get that. I believe that's in, uh, first Ezra, the fourth chapter, because you got a lot of men out here and the scriptures cover, cover, cover you as well. Starting around here, right? The scriptures cover you as well. A lot of wicked men out here who are promoting that too, who are, who are, are upholding that. If you are not standing against wickedness then you are one with it then you are actually part of the opposition you you're an op to the most high you're an op to the men of the lord right so the, the most high is going to destroy you this is first Ezra 4 and i'll start at verse 20 it says a man leaveth his own father that brought him up in his own country and cleaveth unto his wife he sticketh not to spend his life with his wife and remembereth neither father nor mother nor country. By this also, you know, you must know that women have dominion over you. Now, why is that? We read in Jeremiah 31 and 22, the woman has compassed the man. By this, you know, you must know that women have dominion over you. It says, do ye not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? Verse 23, yes, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal, to sell upon the seas and upon the rivers, speaking about the nature of men. Men go and do, you know, whatever, you know, they need to do to please their women, whether it's good or whether it's evil. And that goes on all the time. And you have a lot of these dope dealing type jakes is out here. Dudes are scamming, robbing, you know, in the murder, murder, gang, gang culture. And they might even be on Wall Street or in Hollywood doing whatever, Right to please their women, to please their family. Like a lot of people are getting set up for Christmas now that uh, Thanksgiving, 
is out of the way. Now people are going right to Christmas, the Christmas trees, the buying the gifts. A lot of men do that to please their women, right? And then you have another, you know, portion of them, which are just simps. They're going to just go in line with whatever the society is saying, because they're liberal as we're reading, right? By liberal things shall they stand. First Ezra 4 and 23, yeah, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal and to sell upon the seas or upon the sea and upon the rivers and looketh upon a lion and goeth in the darkness. And when he hath stolen, spoiled and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. See, that shows you the mind of a lot of men. Now, a righteous man, right, who we've all grew, you know, grown up and, and lived in a society well, part of being um, upright in the sight of the Most High is that you come out of this way of thinking and living, right? So men that are men of the Lord, they don't possess this mindset or they're awakening and coming out of this mindset. Wherefore, a man loveth his wife better than his father or mother. Verse 26, yea, many there be that have run out of their wits, meaning lost their mind. There's men behind bars, as men that's done all kind of wickedness because of women, Right? Because a lot of men, once again, are feminists as well. Yea, many there be have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. So you have a lot of men that have become servants to women, which to be a woman means to serve the man. First Ezra 4 and 27. Many also have perished, they have died, have erred in, in, in tremendous sin, do, doing great wickedness. Many also have perished and have erred and sinned for women. See, there you go. So a lot, a lot of people here on the earth today, a lot of men are wicked as well. And the most high is going to get you as well. He's not going to allow for you to escape and be in this mindset without judgment coming to you as well, because you're upholding wickedness. And anyone that's upholding wickedness, right? The most high is against them. Here's a quick example of that. This is um, Psalm 97. Anybody that's upholding wickedness, um, the most high is going to get you. This is Psalm 97 and verse 10. It says, ye that love the Lord, Yahweh, hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. So those that love the most high, right? One of the, one of the um, signs of, of, of someone that loves the most high is you hate evil, right? You hate evil. It's also in, uh, let's get it in Psalm 119. Right. So uh, those that love the most high, hey, one of the things that would be shown in, in someone that, that truly has a love of the most high is that they would hate evil. Right. They would be against. They would shun wickedness. Let me show that here. This is um, Psalm 119. Then going to the point. In 104, it says, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way so as we learn what's righteous according to the bible then hey if you truly believe then you're gonna hate all forms of wickedness right and you're gonna hate everything and everyone that's against what's right against the word so now you become an enemy to the world as the scriptures say you that love the lord hate evil then it says um friendship with the world is enmity with the most high you can't love the world and love the most high so it's very clear those who are actually you know, lovers of the truth and lovers of the most high and truly lovers of his people, which will be the elect today. That's who's actually going to listen and return. So with that, I pray this lesson was edifying, exhorting and comforting. Once again, which is Philippians 4 and 7, the peace that surpasses all understanding, which is this truth. I want to give all praises, infinite honor and glory unto our God, our power, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweshai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. All praises, honor and glory be to the God of heaven and earth, Yahweh. And his only begotten son, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Honors be to the elect elders of the nation of Israel. Barakim La, Habayath, Madabadah. Blessings to the house of David, which ye brothers labor in, day in and day out, giving all diligence, making your calling of election sure. And to the Akim, Wa'akwath, the brothers and sisters that also listen and believe on the glorious gospel being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. And to you I say, Shalom. Shalom, Wa'abarakatham, Karbukaryam.